look where I am. I had to sit in the chair, the captain's chair. Houston Huddleston, he's been on the show many times on the Geek Show. Houston, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for letting me sit in the chair, first of all. Well, you owe us five buck donation, but that's fine. Yeah. Yes, now, uh, we've we, the last time we did it, I think it was in Comic Con. We were on the Enterprise. Was it D or D. E? D. It was. It yeah. would have been D. Yeah. D's yeah. and dog. Yeah. Now this one, all Star Trek fans recognize what bridge we're on. This one is. Th is this an authentic one too? This is well, no. This is an authentic. Uh, it's kind. Of, it's in an odd way, it's authentic because those figures in the back you see there are from Movie Land Wax Museum, mm -hmm. and they were made in 1974, and they sat in storage for about 15 years. It always seems to be the same story. You know, they're either thrown out, or they sit outside, or but in this case, these guys bought them from Movie Land when that went out of business, and they 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 improved upon the set. They, uh, we restored Spock's hair, if you can see that. Uh, it, it was a mess before, and we had a guy named Ron That's Pipes. That's logical, yeah. Yeah, Ron Pipes made Nimoy's hair for five and six, so mm -hmm. he, he actually knew what it was supposed to be like. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's what the set is, that's what those figures are, and we're celebrating it. And by the end of this year, we're going to have them all, we've got all seven figures, it's not just these. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have all of them on display at our Sci-Fi Museum in L.A. Uh, by fall of this year. Yeah, and that's actually where you guys can get involved. So mm -hmm. wh where, where are you actually in, in, in that process? Right now, uh, the company that's doing it is called SEE, Special Events uh, Entertainment. They are the ones who did King Tut, Titanic, uh, Hello Kitty show, Sistine Chapel, and they also did the Star Trek World Tour in 1998 through 2010 or something like that. And so they know Star Trek and they're going to be touring our entire museum, everything that we've got. Uh, one in the U.S. and Canada and one in Berlin, Germany and then traveling in Europe. Uh, and they're in the fundraising stage because they're a for-profit company uh, and we're a non-profit company. So they're, they're raising the funds to get the tour up and going. Yeah, now like I said, we, you and I, we talk a lot uh, mm -hmm. either on the show or at these shows here when yeah. we do. But it, we always get new viewers, new listeners. So anybody's wondering, well, why why should we donate? Why 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 do we need a Hollywood Sci-Fi Museum? Why do we? Why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something that should have been done like 20 years ago. Uh, several actors have told me. Finally, somebody's doing something that Paramount should have done, you know, 25 years ago or whatever. Uh, they had the Vegas experience, but they've never had a permanent science fiction museum that had everything from Star Trek, Star Wars, Firefly, Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, Metropolis, uh, Forbidden Planet, everything sci-fi. And we're doing it. Somehow, this is the right time. This is the age of the nerd with superhero movies uh, by Marvel and the new ones by DC. It's, it's just, you know, it's the right time and place for this. And so that's why it needs to get done. There, there are millions and millions and millions of fans that want this to happen. And somehow we were, I was in the right place at the right time to find the Bridge of the Enterprise. And from there on, we've just got so many major directors, writers, actors behind us helping us do this in studios. Yeah, now I'm sure somebody's wondering, So, and, and I have to ask, because mm -hmm. we've had them on the show, good friends of ours, the Axonar guys, and you know what happened legally with them. Yeah. Ha, do you think Paramount or CBS will ever say anything or put a, try to put a stop to Oh, this? they've said lots of things and we've said them back, but the thing is we are a non-profit foundation of 501c3 and the sets that we have and the figures we have were made decades ago. And the, the bridge sets that we have are all uh, Paramount made. Mm -hmm. They threw out these sets. You know, it's not like we were fan films putting together a thing. They made them and then they threw them out and we're the ones who found them. I found them personally, but I mean, we've started restoring them. So it's, uh, it, there's really, as long as we follow the rules, They've left us alone, and we do follow the rules, unlike, you know, the, the things that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, we just, we know what we're doing. We have good lawyers who told us how to do what we do, and we don't do anything stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to ask again, yeah, because, of because of that, you know, somebody's wondering, well, it's a great idea. I want to donate 
but then there's the, the yeah, other case. that's a different thing. A fan film is something different because uh, we're not doing fan films and trying to raise money for that. We're not. We're a literal nonprofit foundation, educational foundation, and museum. We're not a Star Trek museum. If we were a Star Trek museum, we'd get sued. We're a sci-fi museum that has Star Trek, Star Wars, and we work. We work with all the studios. Uh, Universal gave us twelve million dollars in props because they believed in what we were doing. Yeah. And we know our rules and rights with that. Sony, uh, Paramount's even loaning us some, us, us some stuff. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, this is called not having coffee. <laughs> and having about I know the four feeling. hours sleep Gabby over the last three the days. Feeling. So yeah, <laughs> I know about that, that. No, but uh, that I'm th- that that I'm this conscious is incredible. Um, but no, that's uh, that. Th- people shouldn't worry about that because our board of directors are the top names in Hollywood, uh, and they're not going to let anything stupid happen. Uh, plus, we've got every pretty much every guy who started Star Trek uh, on our board of directors: Rick Sternbach, Ronald D. Moore. Uh, Gosh, Andy Probert, all these guys who designed Star Trek. Um, uh, gosh, again, my little uh, four, four, four year old, uh, four year old, four uh, hour uh, sleep didn't help. Um, <laughs> David Gerald, who created, you know, all the Tribbles. Where are all yeah. the Tribbles? There's, There's some one back there. there. One yeah, here. right. Uh, some here. Uh, so yeah, we've got enough sharp, really uh, smart, savvy people protecting us to who. Won't let us do something stupid. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and let me let me jump on what you said yeah. a minute ago because I was going to go there anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're sitting on the bridge of the Enterprise, so yeah, it's Star Trek. But like you said, it's not a Star Trek museum; it's the sci-fi museum. So right. I mean, it's kind of hard not to think about Star Trek when you say sci-fi. But besides Star Trek, Star Wars that you mentioned, what else can we see in, in a museum? We're getting props from Battlestar Galactica, both versions. Uh, we're getting props from Firefly. We're, uh, we've talked to the people who res- rescued the ship from Firefly, the giant, uh, it's like a space helicopter or something like that. It's a rescue ship. Um, and we've been talking to Fox and Joss Whedon about uh, how we're going to recreate the uh, Firefly uh, cockpit mm. because that was destroyed. One yeah. of our other board members, a man named Timothy Earls, is the guy who designed the ship. So he pulled out the blueprints one day, and I went, oh, my God. So the, the brown coats are going to dig that. Uh, we're going to have a hall of cars with everything from the Batmobile, several different versions, to the DeLorean from Back to the Future, to uh, uh, the hall of robots, which will have everything from, gosh, R2-D2, C-3PO, Robbie the Robot, uh, Robocop. Uh, we're have an Iron Man. We're going to have a bunch of Marvel stuff and I- uh, Avengers stuff and X- X-Men. Uh, Brian Singer, I saw him about a year and a half ago, and he said, oh, I kept some props. You know, I'm happy to yeah. uh, loan them to you. And So it's going to be a mishmash of different stuff. It'll be really, it's really exciting and cool. I'm, I'm personally really uh, thrilled about it. Yeah, so obviously we got them excited, so tell them where to go to support the Sci-Fi Museum. Go to HollywoodSciFi.org, as you see on that sign right there, probably not from that angle. O-R-G, HollywoodSciFi.org, and you can find out, you can find videos and photos and all sorts of annoying stuff about the museum. But the main thing is, this year is when we finally open. Uh, We're starting our traveling exhibit, which is going to take us all over the world. Ultimately, I know that we're going to start in L.A., and then we're probably going to go to Dallas, and then hopefully Houston, Texas. And we've been talking to Salt Lake City. They've been really cool. And we want to get on both coasts. We want to travel and help help make it accessible to people who can't come to L.A. That's the main thing. Yeah. Not everyone can count. They can't afford it. Uh, they're disabled. Whatever it happens to be. Um, we want to take this around the world and show it's have people experience sitting on the bridge of the Enterprise. You know, uh, that's that's our whole purpose behind this. Believe me, I'm right here. It's a good feeling sitting in this chair. Yeah, yeah. so again, not just Star Trek fans, Star Wars fans. If you're a sci-fi fan, to quote a famous archaeologist, it all belongs in a museum. Houston's the one that's doing it, so go there, support them. Now, sitting here, I can't help but want to tell Sulu to take us to Warp 1 and... 
how can I not open hailing frequencies? We have Nichelle Nichols sitting and signing with the fans Nichelle as we sit. We have Nichelle Nichols. We have the first lady of the bridge of the Enterprise, which is incredible. I mean, that she said yes is incredible. Yeah. You know, and yesterday we had Marina Sirtis from Next Generation, who was the first lady of the Next Gen Bridge, the D Bridge. And right now, sitting over there, we have We're Anne, celebrating 30 years, by the way, this year. Exactly. Uh, 50 years it's been. For, yeah. And 30 years for Next for Gen. Next right. Gen. Uh, we have Ann Robinson, who was the star of War of the Worlds from 1953, I think it is. And also she was in the TV version, and she was in the Tom Cruise Spielberg version as well. So this is, I, I mean, I know how fortunate we are. Believe me, this isn't, you know, we're not just sitting there, yeah, we deserve it. Yeah. It's yeah. Just not, oh, my God, these are legends. These are sci-fi legends. So... You know, God bless them. We're so thrilled to have them here. And we're so thrilled to be here and have this incredible set and these wonderful figures that were thought lost for about 12 years. Yeah. You know, it's incredible. So. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. I mean, I've gotten really lucky with the, the people I've met and interviewed on the Geek Speak show. But I got to say, all the ones we've done before are, are, are fun. This interview that we're doing right now yeah. has to be the best. I've got, well, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly here, Nichelle Nichols. I'm on the. the captain's chair this is one of the most fun interviews so again go support them the, the uh, website one more time hollywood sci .org, org and we will make it so thanks Houston. you're welcome thank you